Mallorca guys and girls. This is the second hour you're listening to Love Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna and I'm pretty excited, I must tell you. Uh, this show, of course, broadcast from Needles, California, in the tri-state area. You know, you know the story, I don't need to remind you. Moave County, here where I am, and Needles, of course, and then you have uh, Lovely Nevada, blah, blah, blah. But what I love the most, that through the internet and through Facebook and other social media, this show is really getting everywhere. I got listeners from Australia, Germany, Italy, and of course, now I found out that also I have an incredible lady from uh, Sweden and uh, you know I don't know if you know Sweden but it's kind of an interesting place at least for me I like history and I'm always being fascinated about uh, uh, past history and also how the population and the history and the society changes you know and I didn't ever told you but before I came to America I was really tempted between Germany Switzerland Sweden and America. Can you believe that? Kind of confused guy. Yes, I was. But, you know, destiny wanted, I came to America. And I, of course, I have no regrets. I'm here. But Sweden, I always had a special place. Even, of course, uh, um, socially, it is not exactly my type of uh, situation. I'm not a socialist person. I'm an individual, uh, pretty much stubborn individual. And uh, But regardless, I thought it was kind of a mystical place, very fascinating. And uh, I like Swedish people. I really do. At least what used to be of Swedish people now is becoming more and more another thing. But that's not a topic. Let me talk. Let me bring this lady because uh, I know that uh, we have difference of ours. Her name is Joytish from Sweden. Joytish, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Nice to meet you, first of all. And uh, can you tell Thank us- Thank you, nice to meet you. Can you tell us a little bit which part of Sweden, if there is a place or a name or even just an idea, because many of us, we know just Sweden, it's out, somewhere out there north. Where are you in Sweden? Which part of Sweden? I'm in the central of Sweden, in the capital, Stockholm, and uh, Sweden is in the northern part of Europe. It's uh, quite close to Russia, actually. Mm, interesting. So you are a Swedish lady, and um, I'm just curious, you know, we found each other through Facebook, and uh, I, I guess, I don't want to assume, you, I think you heard some of my shows, right? Yeah, I have. Okay, so the fact we're still talking, that's pretty amazing. Normally people have to listen to my show, they just cut me off, but that's great. Thank you. No, you know what I like about this uh, Facebook and also about the show? We are finding each other, uh, as I said, we do not need to agree on everything, but I'm finding great humanity out there that um, there is an awakening. And you tell me if I'm wrong. There is an awakening, no matter if you're from Sweden, America, Italy, Germany, uh, people are waking up against the globalism, against the new world order, and I see we're all facing the same problems, you know, like, for example, this invasion, this planned invasion. Mm -hmm. I know Sweden has been hit pretty hard by this, uh, call them refugee. I call them like a racial disintegration of a nation, you know, like the hordes, like the Kalergi plan. But please, you there, you know, I read yeah. the news. Tell us what's going on in Sweden right now with this, uh, let's say, refugee situation from countries like North Africa or Syria or whatever. What's going on? Yeah, I agree. There is an awakening. And uh, in my country, we have been um, quite strained by the huge burden of uh, massive immigration or refugee uh, arriving here. And uh, it has led to what some call a system crash, which has been denied by the authorities. Uh, so me, my, um, I have tried to... Uh, shed a light on the situation, uh, me and some other people here, and uh, the mainstream media basic basically covers up the situation. And um, this is why I'm trying to reach out, because uh, people need to understand what's going on, not just in Sweden, but in all of Europe. Yes, I have a friend from Germany, for example, also in Italy, uh, things are out of control. I mean, this is nothing to do about immigration. And, you know, you're not talking here to a KKK guy, okay? As you can know, I was even born here. I'm an immigrant myself. But when I go out, I believe that every country I go to, I want to follow the laws. I want to integrate. For example, if I was coming to Sweden, I wanted to become part of Sweden. I didn't want to change it, you know, with uh, spaghetti and other stuff. You know, you go to a country, <laughs> you try to assimilate, yeah. learn the language, respect their, their customs. And then, of course, at home, you want to do spaghetti and kumbaya. That's fine. But when you go out, try to act like a Swedish. 
Now, yeah. the problem is I see a change in uh, in identity culturally, mm-hmm. uh, and I have nothing against races, but I tell you, it's something that happens by nature, by natural migration, it's fine. But when I see there is a plan, and I already talked about yeah. that, the Kalergi plan, it's a, a plan by the globalists to disintegrate the identity of nationality in Europe. That's sad because, you know, I, I used mm-hmm. to like to go to Germany or Sweden. I say, okay, if I go to France, I see French people. If I go to Italy, I see Italian people. If I go to Swedish, I expect to see people with blonde or at least some characteristic that they're from Sweden. I don't want to go to, uh, let's say, Saudi Arabia, okay? Because that's what is going on. Uh, mm. Swedish capital of uh, rapes. So that's why I read uh, in the news. Uh, seems like in Europe now, Sweden is being hit very hard, at least according to statistics, with rapes. And unfortunately, most of yeah. these rapists are from other countries. Is that true? Uh, unfortunately, yes. And uh, you're right that um, it's not about being a racist, which is the usual attack you get when you speak out about a problem here. And uh, I have a personal experience of what's going on. I actually had to move from one suburb of this uh great town that I live in to another part because of uh, a group of uh, male immigrants uh, being involved with the gang rapes in the area. And uh, yeah, actually, it was another immigrant neighbor who told me that he had overheard the other guy speak about that I was the next target. And uh, he had alerted the Swedish police when uh, they tried to break in through my balcony. Wow. And uh, sadly, the Swedish police never alerted me. I could, of course, hear them, oh my but I didn't know what was going on. So I went back to sleep oh uh, because when you live in a big town, things are going, going on all the time. So uh, when the neighbor alerted me, he said that you need to do three things. I was single at the time. He said, you need to get a boyfriend <laughs> or you need to get a big, vicious dog or you need to move because you're next oh on the hit God. list. Oh. Oh my gosh. Wow, I didn't know that. And this is very disturbing because unfortunately, uh, I read the news from here, okay? And this mm-hmm. is not like uh, some sort of a horror movie that you can say pause or replay or let's go to sleep. This is real. I mean, people yeah. die or even worse than that. Sometimes I think that would be an easy way out. Torture and scars in your soul and your body, they're going to stay forever. I mean, I read stories, for example, what happened to a couple in Denmark, uh, you know, boyfriend mm-hmm. beaten up and the woman raped. Another situation in Sweden, raped by different people at the same time in a way that she had to go to the hospital. And at the end of the day, government, that one thing should do, all over, where, no matter where, they, where you are, one function of government is supposed to protect people's rights and among those, life and liberty. You're supposed to be yeah. free to act as a woman. I remember, you know, when I used to go to Germany, uh, it was a, some sort of a free society. Women who used to be able to act as women, they don't need to hide their body, especially if they're beautiful, and people need to behave Okay, you don't jump mm-hmm. on women. They are not like dogs or camels that you start to rape them in the middle of the street. Okay, you behave as a human being. Now, I see, for example, on the German TV, there was an ad that tried to uh, suggest to the German people to start to wear the little, uh, uh, I don't know what's the name of the jibab or whatever it's the name of the hijab, leg. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you tell me that the Swedish police, they could not even warn you. I mean, you are a miracle that you're still talking today. Because, uh, by the way, I don't want to go into details, but you are an attractive mm-hmm. lady, and there's nothing to do. Oh, I mean, you. if people need to behave, we are not during the Neanderthal uh, caveman time that, you know, ooh, mm-hmm. woman, and they jump on you. I mean, that's insane. Now, talking about guns, you know, this show is called Love, Guns, and Freedom. Second hour, normally we talk about guns. And I'm curious if you can share with us, uh, you know, I live in Arizona, and I tell you, there are no perfect places in the world. We have our own problems. But when it comes down to guns, this is the best place in the world. Every law-abiding mm-hmm. woman or man or transsexual, I don't care who you are, just because you're here. You live here. You have an Arizona resident. If you have no criminal record, you do not need any government permit. You can go to the gun shop or even between private and buy any gun you want immediately and put it in your pocket, on your holster, even better, without permit. So that's our mm-hmm. reality. Please share your reality that I have an idea, but I would like to hear from you. 
how it is for the Swedish man or Swedish woman, citizen, without any type of a criminal record, how is it possible to defend themselves? Is it possible to buy a gun and to have it on yourself or maybe in your home through the government? Yeah, that's a very good question and important, especially in the times we're in here. And uh, it's very frustrating because uh, we're not allowed to have any kind of self-defense when it comes to guns. Uh, so it's very rare that people grow up learning even about how to handle a gun or a weapon of self-defense, um, which I believe is a human right. Yes, it is. And uh, you say exactly the most important thing. It's a human right. And it's sad because, you know, I'm sure that uh, many of these politicians, like in Italy, like in Germany, I think in Sweden too, uh, they don't have to live the same life that you do. If they live, uh, let's say, in the... First of all, they have different zip codes, okay? I don't think they live in the neighborhoods with the next door with the uh, Allah or whatever, some sort of a gang rapist. They got their own fence area, okay? And more important, mm -hmm. they got their private security or they have the government security. They have guns. That's a fact. So the rest of us, or the rest of you in this case, I'm sorry, in Europe, you're all disarmed. And meanwhile, all these politicians, they talk the big philosophical talk. At the same time, they live in another reality. Now, let's say, is there a way to... I know there is, for example, a way in Italy, very difficult, but there is a way. But how it works, for example, if you as a woman say, I want to buy a gun to have in my own home, and I want to be able to train with this gun in case I need to use it. Is there a possibility and how difficult it is? Uh, I'd have to get back on the exact details on that. But yes, you can get a license, but you will, of course, go through the uh, rigorous procedure of uh, checkups and so on. And uh, I haven't done that, but I've thought about it. I have a friend who's uh, an instructor for uh, the Swedish police and the military. He took me to a training course and uh, I'm happy to say I did quite well. And uh, I like the, I think it was a Glock. Wow. Which caliber was that? I'm curious. Yeah, me too. I can't remember. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> but anyway, I tell you, normally, normally my experience, women, they're much better than men. And I tell you why. First of all, okay. a woman has not the ego that the guy has, the average guy. For example, I am a different guy. Mm -hmm. I don't have ego. Seriously. I know that sounds like weird, but when I go out, I want to learn. I'm not there to say, oh, I'm the best. I want to learn so everybody can somehow share something. I'm ready to suck. It's a me suck, to, 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 to suck it up, to, to learn, yeah, yeah. okay? Now, normally women, they have much better ego than men because they go there, they humble, say, okay, show me what's going on, okay? I, I don't want to be the ramble, okay? So that's a good start. Number two, no, also women, especially when you never shot before, you don't have bad habits. So you are kind of a tabula rasa, like uh, the Latin used to say, like an empty, empty um, you know, book. You know, you can be, uh, especially if you have a good instructor, he can start to tell you the right things and you don't have bad habits to, to modify. So that's a very good start. And then, of course, I believe there is always some genetics or at least some predisposition. Some people really have more natural high coordination or muscle coordination. That's something that is part of our us. So I, I saw some of your targets. You were doing great, by the way. Did you shoot only a couple times or just one time? Uh, it was just that time, actually. Wow. And I've thought about, uh, there's a quite big culture here uh, involving uh, paintball. Mm -hmm. And they have built uh, interesting and fascinating training courses uh, that are like uh, huge instrument uh, industrial areas. It's sort of like a war zone. Yes. Urban, uh, ur urban uh, city kind yeah. of training ground oh, that's a great training for let's say also physical fitness mindset and uh something i want to talk about strategy exactly you start to think like yeah. you get your adrenaline going i mean i know they're gonna shoot you with uh, a paintball but guess what first of all they're gonna hurt a little bit you're gonna feel pinched i got i done a couple times mm -hmm. and it's incredible because then you start to get in the mindset this could be real and of course, yeah. you don't have a real gun in your hands, but the transition from your paintball to, let's say, a Glock with sim munition. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. Have you ever heard about the sim munition? What is exactly a sim munition? No. Okay, no. the sim munition is a, a special round that, of course, is not little, but it shoots from a regular Glock with a modification in the barrel, okay? Mm -hmm. So when it shoots, it shoots like a paint, okay? 
but it really is gonna hit you and it's gonna do a bang like a regular gun so you have like almost a real gun with a ammunition that is gonna just somehow create a pain in, in, on, in, on your on your body but you're gonna feel okay. it and you don't have any more like a like for example the paintball it's good for training for you know strategy as you said and also for adrenaline and also for muscle and aerobic but at the same time you know you don't have probably a real weapon you know it's different from the the regular weapon but with the simunition for example you have a real glock in your hand with just a modification and you're shooting rounds that they will go bang the only difference is that they don't kill you but they somehow let's say hit you with the paint so that's a yeah, great you will transition. feel the impact exactly so from that would be a great start and then of course you know um to have the opportunity to also find a weapon that you could uh, uh, do at least the basic uh, operations, you know, mal let's say how to clear malfunction, also how to do dry practice. I really pray mm -hmm. the Swedish people, like the German people, the Italian people, somehow in this life, because I don't want to wait three generations, I hope all Europe, I say all the world, that they don't have this uh, in their constitution, like uh, we have here, the Second Amendment, they can find a way to have it because it's a natural right and i feel sorry i really i really feel it you know you could be my sister you could be my mom you could be my girlfriend and you know i have a mom for example in italy okay and i want to bring mm -hmm. her here now i'm tired to think that she's there and defenseless and i think all these women also men they have no even they're like in france when the riots were coming out they were hiding behind the curtains that's not what a sovereign population should do i feel about you know your, your ancestors you know they were kind of bloody but damn it at least they got some some balls and they, they you know they would never put up with this invasion you know no no i, I mean yeah. the, how it happened that's why i like to study history how a population get transformed like a social engineer program for to be such a let's say proud nation sometimes a little bit too much you know they used to go raiding around europe pretty bloody out there but guess what they never would have put up with uh, being invaded and have their women raped or gang stalker or something like that for a second no and your government now is allowing that i'll let you i'll give you the floor thank you yeah you're right and i'm very sorry about what's going on and happening in italy it breaks my heart and uh, I hope everything goes well for you and your mother. And uh, as for Sweden, yeah, it's a psychological warfare, basically. It's about shame and uh, pushing. They're altering our history because if you take the Vikings, for example, they were great uh, traders, businessmen, mm -hmm. and they had a cultural exchange. And there's a lot about there's a lot of misconceptions about the Vikings. <laughs> And um, basically, you can talk about a folk spirit or a uh, tribal spirit. And uh, they're breaking that up right now. And we've been told by our so-called leaders, which are basically corporate, uh, pardon me the expression, but corporate whores. Oh, they are. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they should wear tags. Uh, from who is sponsoring them because it's not a democracy at all it's a, it's a scam mm -hmm. and um, uh, so anyway yeah and it's beyond corporation by the way yes it technically everything structure under corporation most of the nations are corporations but the, what they really make me realize that uh, all these politicians they are nothing else but puppets or highest manager mm -hmm. uh, management mm -hmm. for a global elite or bankers that they pretty much decide how to plan how to create uh, or destroy nations that's what they're doing i mean every politician for example we had in italy the last 50 years they all been passed and let's say even lately without even election just uh, mm -hmm. selected and that's i see the same things for example in germany like for example the, the prime minister she's a completely globalist she also got awarded of the Kalergi plan a few years ago so she's following the plan and i'm sure and i say sure maybe not but i think also in sweden according to what mm -hmm. your politicians are doing are following the plan now first of all how did you learn english i mean you got a really good english better than mine by the way uh, <laughs> how did how did it Thank happen you. in sweden did you learn all that yeah i'm happy to say that uh in school everyone is taught uh, taught english here and uh, uh on swedish tv we don't uh, what do you call it dub 
mm-hmm. the the shows, but we have it in the original language. So we're getting accustomed to the English spoken language, and we have subtitles in Swedish. Wow, it is very amazing. Which they don't, yeah, they don't have that in. Uh, I don't think they have it in Germany, but they definitely don't have it in Italy or Spain. So oh, don't get um, me going. Um, I, I, yeah. I left Italy. I knew 20 words. I mean, I, I knew some words I did when I was younger, uh, some experience in America, but you think my English is bad now? Imagine before. <laughs> okay. And uh, all Yeah, I'm... but it, it's important because it helps us build bridges and we need each other right now more than ever. Oh, I agree. And what, was gonna, yeah, what, what I wanted to say was that basically we've been told by these puppet leaders that we have no Swedish culture. And it's insulting mm-hmm. because Sweden has a very rich and uh, beautiful culture and spirit. And to be told that we're nothing. So basically, they want to erase our history and and uh, replace us. It's true. It is true. And, and this is very true. And it's sad at the same time. Because uh, one thing they're trying to do, they're trying, first of all, to rewrite history. And uh, to the yeah. new generation, brainwash them and uh, make them believe that somehow we all come from the same place. No, we don't. And that's what I really mm-hmm. like about Europe when it used to be a sovereign nation, not now, the EU. Uh, you know, I used to love the idea, that, okay, I'm tired of Italy, I wanna go to Germany, or I wanna go to Sweden. And I know every place I go, I, I was able to breathe and experience different culture, different people, different language. And then if I didn't like it, okay, let's go to another place. Now it's all the same. Or at least they're trying to make yeah. it all the same. Um, you know, as I said, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to talk to you on the air. But more important, I want to thank you for my listeners because, you know, I like when we can share experiences from everywhere around the world. And, you know, even this show is a mostly US uh, baseless show. I like the idea now that more and more, if you are from another country, I don't care from New Zealand, Australia, Africa, Congo, or even from Mars, please, I want you on the show because we have things in common that probably you may not even believe. So many things that are happening to all of us. It is not just American going down, it's Europe and also, of course, the rest of the world. Um, can I ask you another thing, if I, if I don't mind? Uh, no, please do. First of all, you know, I want to give you the floor because you are, I've been doing the research about you. You you study a lot. You you know more than the average person about many topics that normally, I don't say in Europe, they're harder to find people like you, but, you know, it's a number of games. You know, America, we have 300 million people. It's probably we got more people now that are waking up. Europe, mm-hmm. I see, especially at least talking about my Italian friends, uh, there is an awakening, but it's not as much as, for example, here. Um, how did you wake up? I mean, what exactly, what happened for you? Because everybody of us has some moment that you say, this is not what I've been told. I mean, your brain is an independent brain and you almost act like, uh, let's say, according to the American government, you would be considered probably a domestic terrorist. You don't go along with this globalism. How did you wake up? That's a good question. Uh, I've been a mystic or searcher, seeker all my life, and uh, I didn't buy the official uh, brainwashing. And uh, I decided a couple of years ago that I was going to write a fantasy fiction book, Mm. like a thriller. And I talked to my brother, and he said that you should do some research to make your storyline more credible. So I did, and uh, to my shock and surprise, I discovered that uh, evil isn't a, an abstract, mysterious force. Evil actually has name and addresses. So, you know, are you familiar with William Cooper? Yes. Um, you're talking about the, the, the author and also radio uh, host that, by the way, yeah. he got killed. And he has a great book that he wrote and I bought it. Is uh, Behold, Behold the Pale Horse. Brava, yeah. you're great. I mean, you're really... Please go ahead. Did you read his book or did you have a chance to watch his, uh, listen to his shows? Yeah, I did. Uh, I haven't read his book. Uh, it's free to, to download from uh, Alfred Weber. Mm-hmm. He's a Canadian uh, former judge or he's a present judge and he's a truther and activist also. He's great. Uh, anyway, uh, William Cooper, in his book, Behold a Pale Horse, he outlined the, the agenda and it was basically to... Um, get the weapons away from the civilians and ordinary people in, in uh, multiple countries and uh, funnel, or do you say tunnel weapons, mm-hmm. smuggle 
to uh, the criminal uh, gangs to create and destabilize uh, areas and then uh, you know, problem solution scenario. Mm-hmm. Is it called Hegelian dialectics or something? Yes, like again, that? Detect, problem reaction solution. Exactly. Yeah. You know what happened just a few minutes ago, by the way? This is uh, the show is being recorded, by the way. Today is exactly right now. Uh, it is mm-hmm. uh, a Saturday. Excuse me, Sunday, yeah. Sunday early morning. Okay. And I was reading the news. Eight people injured during stabbing attack at the Minnesota mall. And uh, eight people, they got stabbed. And uh, of course, now they don't tell you much, but they tell you one thing. That's pretty amazing for the news. Normally, they always keep this information till the end, only when they're forced. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see exactly. Anderson said that the suspect made at least one reference to Allah during the attack and asked at least one person whether they were Muslim. So here we go, Pro- problem, reaction, solution. We have mm-hmm. uh, criminal governments, that at least criminal elements of this government, like, of course, we know Obama is the puppet face uh, that is allowing hundreds of thousands of unvetted people from very dangerous parts of the world. And don't get me wrong, you know, probably you know where I think, they, you know, they created also this migration crisis. The refugee, first they dropped the bombs in Syria, they created a crisis, and then out of the blue, we have the refugees. This part of this, the, the reaction of all this bombing, but that's another mm-hmm. story. Still, that's not supposed to allow to have millions of uh, uh, these people that we don't even know where they're from, but we know for sure that they believe most of them in this religion that is not about peace. And now guess what? We have a stabbing right now uh, in this moment. We had a bombing, by the way, uh, just a few hours ago in New York, same day. Now, you put 10 or 15 of these out of the blue all at the same time, that would be enough mm-hmm. to declare martial law. And I'm sure you know what's going on when martial law happens, right? Yeah. It's been uh, several events in Europe also, like in France. And uh, and the situation is Tur- in Turkey is uh, worrying me because, uh, you know, about the European Union and how it's trying to expand. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's been talks about um, allowing Turkey into um, the European Union. And uh, Turkey is like a hub or a center through which certain elements are passing through. And I think that Russia uh, exposed via satellite that there are trucks with, was it oil from Syria Mm -hmm. being taken out? Uh, Yes. So so, um, then we also have the situation with uh, Fethullah Gulen, who's allegedly sponsoring uh, Hillary Clinton. And uh, he used to be friends with uh, Erdogan, but they're, falling out and um, he sponsors Islamic schools in the US and possibly Europe too. And what goes on on these Islamic schools? Uh, are they, um, uh, what are, are their extremist views being uh, programmed to these new citizens? And uh, then we have the sponsoring of uh, mosques and they're building mosques everywhere. Mm-hmm. So, and basically, it's, you know, the Christians are under attack. It's not just in Iraq with the ancient Christian tribe called the Yazidis. It's everywhere. And uh, if you say, you said right now that the recent attack, they talked about Allah, and did they ask about their religion? Mm-hmm. Yes, they asked if they were Muslim, correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, and this is a tell you, I believe that part of this is like almost a control crisis. You know, I'm not saying that uh, every one of these attackers they are mind control or they are just uh, you know government plants. No, they are they are real scum people. They really believe in this stuff, but they are let's say mm-hmm. used like pawns. You know, like of course among ISIS that we know very well that is now mainstream news that is being funded by this administration with our tax dollar. At the same time, the mm-hmm. the recruits. I mean, the the, the low level idiot out there they really believe what they say you know the, their book and you know whatever they're doing they think is real then of course the mastermind behind they're just operatives from the CIA and the, probably other uh, governments uh, from other countries not just uh, this country unfortunately and, uh, and mm-hmm. people you know this is, if you don't believe that that's fine but I tell you we brought I brought you facts uh, after fact directly from Pentagon's document directly from Obama's voice by the way last week now, if you don't mind, you know, I'm finishing this hour and I really want okay. to thank you again. You can stay with me if you want, because I really like to talk about things that probably, uh, you know, first I would like to do a gift for you. 
and probably uh, this is something that I would like to give to give to every human being around the world that would like to train with a handgun. Uh, I am almost finished to write a book. It's called Handgun for Self-Defense, okay? And I want to be yeah. a premise. I'm not an instructor. I call myself a professional student. Probably I, I not probably, I know I know more than the average. And uh, people tell me sometimes I'm a little humble. I just say I'm a student. But what I do, I go out, I take time, and they have the opportunity to go to different places. Like, for example, I train, uh, I graduated from Sight Nevada. And all the knowledge that I have, at least in this journey, because this is just one of the phases of my journey, when it comes down to the art and science of the handgun for self-defense, I put it together in this ebook that is going to be published in a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, it's not published yet, but I would like to send you a copy, e ebook copy. Maybe you can okay, read it. You. Maybe you can uh, just get inspired. And maybe, I don't know, if one day ever you're going to have the chance to have a gun, maybe in theory you can start to think about things that sometimes you got to go through classes or hours of instructions. I want to just send that to you mm -hmm. as my little uh, thank you just to for be here, okay? Thank you. That's very sweet. Thank you. And uh, meanwhile, on this hour, what I do also, I share deals because I want to give the opportunity for everybody, to everybody to find the best prices for the best things. For example, uh, you know, there are many places you can buy ammo. And I say, you know, shop around, internet is good. Uh, but I do always my research. For example, if you shoot nine millimeters, okay? One of the rounds, by the way, that I like the most, because, you know, um, it's everywhere you can find nine millimeters, especially no matter where you are, it's a very common round. I think it's very effective. Everybody can shoot it. Um, so much that uh, not just uh, people like uh, ladies or things. The Navy SEALs shoot 9 millimeters. okay? I mean, that's the point. With the new technology now of ammunition, you can have a great ballistic and great results. Now, I found different deals. And I'd like to ask you maybe if you ever had a chance to know how much cost, for example, a box of 9 millimeters in Sweden. But I tell you, we can find great deal, for example, this week on SGMO, sgmo.com, uh, that they have, for example, nine millimeters, uh, Wolf, a Russian, a nine millimeter steel case. They are good for training, but you never know. You know, if you have to shoot somebody, it's always better than a rock. Uh, and you can buy a box of 50 rounds for $8.50. And if you're out of their state, you don't even pay sale tax. Uh, you have any idea, um, what type of prices for a box of full metal jacket nine millimeter in Sweden? Not a, not at the moment, but uh, I can uh, I can do some research. That would be great. You know, I like always to compare because, for example, I was looking prices in Italy. First of all, you know, you had to look at how many even rounds you allowed to keep, you allowed to have mm -hmm. in your home by the law. And if I remember well, you cannot have more than two hundred rounds. Otherwise, you break the law. Think about it. And uh, I have 200 rounds in my truck anytime. And probably I got yeah, yeah. 80, 80 rounds on me just with the magazine. So just to show how difficult, uh, how different it is. And then when it comes down to prices, well, everything costs much more because, you know, the, the government tried to tax everything they can, when, especially in countries like, you know, Europe. So I would like to know, you know, if, you know, that's why I would like to say to our friends in America, you know, especially in Arizona, you know, we have it so good. Let's not underestimate it. You know, I know many ladies around here that they have uh, guns and they have uh, uh, all the guns they want and they leave the house and uh, they don't even bring their guns. Or maybe they just say, whatever, nothing gonna happen to me today. Forget about that. First of all, if you have a spare tire, are you gonna leave it at the home? And more important, think about people like you and in Europe, they wish. Now tell me honestly, would you like to think if you had the magic wand, I'm the leader Aladdin, okay? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get you every handgun you want. And now, after I finish to give you the special magic power, you will be able to walk in the street of Sweden with your concealed gun of your choice. How would you feel? Would you love that? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I would, I would actually, because uh, the, situ the situation here is quite serious. Yeah, you know, besides, of course, that's the number one, survival. You know, you want to have a chance as a woman to defend yourself and don't be like uh, uh, completely, I said, 
dying is not even the worst thing. I believe the worst thing can be facing a, a group of these animals in, in their hands before anybody can mm -hmm. find you. That for me would be the worst thing if I was a man or a woman. I don't care. They go also for men. Don't get me wrong. These people, they're animals, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they go for dogs. I mean, seriously, this is insane. I heard yeah. stories that poor animals. Now, but beside that, that of course, number one, one thing really I felt when I came to Arizona, the sense of to be a free human being. Of course, we're never completely free. We have other problems to solve. But when it comes to the issue that you know very well in every civilization, what they do, the, the oppressors or the conquerors. I mean, look at the painting of, uh, for example, Julius Caesar, when there is a Rex, uh, Virgin Gitori, I forgot the name in English. Anyway, when this, the Gauls submit, there is a pile of swords in front of Caesar's. Slaves get disarmed. So the moment that I was able to walk in the street here with my gun, and I tell you, I've been in Arizona 11 years now. There is no one day, no one day, that I woke up in the morning that my gun is not on my holster. Wherever I go, I have my gun with me and my rifle in my truck. And it is not because I'm paranoid, no, because I have rights. And I remember when I didn't have the right. I remember when I was in Europe, I could even think these things. So that's for me even the most important thing, you know, feeling like, wow, I have that right that I know in many other parts of the world for, that doesn't exist. So would you love that? I, I can see, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not seeing you now, but I could see, I, I can imagine if I were me, oh my gosh, that would feel so beautiful just to think, you know, <laughs> wow. What? Yeah, it's a mindset. Just knowing that you're able to defend yourself and those you love, of course, or if anyone else is in a, a crisis situation, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, what I want to share with your listeners is that um, I'm interested in self-defense, not just for women, but for everyone. And what I've learned is that never, ever let anyone take you to location two. If anything happens to you and they say, uh, I have a gun, uh, at your aimed at you if you don't do as uh, you have to do as i say and follow me mm -hmm. never let them take you to location two because that's where the crime will take place where there are no witnesses rather face the situation right away and fight for your life because he's gonna kill you but you don't want to be taken to location two because that's where they will torture you or rape you just my mindset is, okay, kill me right away. I'm going to fight for my life, and I'd rather die right here, right now, than to be taken somewhere where I be, will be held hostage for a couple of days and, you know, tortured. Yes, yes. I mean, I don't want to go into details today, but I, I, I would like to talk more about these things. I, I've been reading part of stories that they are really beyond evil, beyond evil. Yeah. What happened to women, also men, I mean, seriously. Uh and uh, you're right. First of all, you know, no matter if you have a weapon or not, you are the weapon. As I said, we are, our mindset is the weapon. And more important, our instinct of survival is the weapon. You know, if you fight mm -hmm. back, you have a chance. If you submit, you're gone. And of course, awareness. You know, there is a, in this book that, by the way, I would like to invite people to go to zana.us and subscribe my newsletter because as the book will be released, I will send you, of course, uh, some sort of uh, warning. Uh, the first important thing is to be aware because hopefully you don't have to use that gun if you know that the problem is waiting for you there. You know, you want to see the problem before it degenerates into something bad. So that's the idea, you know, and uh, interesting. Um, any question you have for me, something maybe related to guns, you know, something that maybe, I don't know, you would like to ask or would like to know, anything I can try to answer because as I said, I'm a humble student, but I try to learn a lot or I try my best. Anything you have about calibers or type of guns, revolvers, semi-auto, whatever you want. Uh, well, I, I would like to know how uh, we can uh, fight back here in Europe so we can get the rights that you have in America. But maybe that's the topic for another show. I don't know. That's uh, probably a, a billion dollar question. If I had the answer, I would be a billionaire. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great question. Don't get me wrong. I always think about that myself. How could you, uh, all my brothers and sisters in Europe or around the world, have the opportunity to have at least a foundation, that can, that even if it wasn't perfect, but at least was the best foundation in this human uh, civilization of 5,000 years, with the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. 
For example, in Italy, yeah. we, we don't have. You know, that's a fact in many other parts of the world. That's a good yeah. question for other show. Anything more related to guns? For example, uh, when you shot your semi-automatic Glock, um, do you remember the model, the sides? You may be a Glock 17, a Glock 19. What did you have? Any idea? I'm sorry, I can't remember. I have the picture, so maybe we can look at that. Okay, because normally I tell you, Glocks, they are great guns for, uh, especially used by European uh, police. And uh, I would say most of the time, uh, especially for, uh, um, let's say, standard weapon, they go for the Glock 17. And uh, I would say 9 millimeters is the standard caliber for most of the agencies there. And uh, but I'm just curious. Sometimes I like to know more about this. Anything you would like to know more about, for example, I don't know, anything about Arizona? Because, you know, we try to learn from each other. That's what I like about the show. I, I like to ask you a question about Sweden. Anything you want to know about guns and lifestyle in Arizona I can help you with? Um, well, I was thinking, uh, do you have any gun that is uh, like, like a smart weapon where your fingerprint is the lock, like a security that no one else can take a gun away from you? Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, the, the government is trying to do that. They call it smart guns. I call them smart okay. guns for dumb people because unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the first of all, the microchip or whatever, this fingerprint stuff is going to be easy to manipulate, can no work, and they can also now remotely disactivate your gun. So they want that. California is pushing for oh, that. Obama okay. pushing for that. And uh, no, unfortunately, it doesn't work. Like uh, there are also a lot of bad side effects. So yeah, they will try mm -hmm. to push that. Smart guns for dumb people. No, I like the old fashioned gun that is on, is on me. And no, but, I mean, the point is I know it works every time. And remember, you can disactivate electronics with EMP or any type of a microwave. True. So we don't want yeah. to have that type of situation. Interesting mm -hmm. question though, really good. Listen, I want to remind again to my listeners, uh, Please, if you have, you want to be on the show, I would like to have you. Uh, of course, I like to have you if you are from Arizona or my neighborhood here. Great, but if you are from other countries to share your reality, I would love that. This is exactly one of the ideas of the show. And now today we had uh, Joy Tish from Sweden, and I really appreciate your presence to 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 learn from each other. And also, there is so much more. I hope to have you back to at least know what's going on. And I really pray for the Swedish people. They will unite and they will start to talk to the politicians and say, listen, uh, you had it good for a long time. This is our country. We want it back with or without you. That's, I really think, would be the solution, maybe my ideal solution, what we can do in Europe to uh, get it back. You know, it's time for people to start to get out of their televisions and uh, unite Forget about political parties. You know, this is a fight for your survival. As simple as that. And more important for your next generation. I give you the floor. We have uh, uh, the last uh, 60 seconds. Whatever you want to say. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show. And I'd love to be back. And um, I also want to make a call out to everyone who's listening that we need each other. Uh, so I hope we can build bridges between America and Europe. This is the only way I believe we can solve this by cooperation. And this is a gr grassroot level cooperation I'm talking about. Very good, Joytish. Thank you very much. That was Joytish from Sweden. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom. We'll look at Zana. Don't go away because we have an incredible recipe of pasta for the final hour. I will be broadcasting from my kitchen. Yes, from my kitchen. I will drink wine too. Don't go away. <laughs>